The Oppo Reno2 is the company's sequel to the premium mid-range phone they released just a few months ago. Now mind you, the time gap between the releases of the original Reno and the Reno2 is only 3 months, so in that amount of time, how much has really changed? I mean, we know that there's a new chipset and a revamped set of cameras, and it's definitely a decent upgrade over the original Reno, but what I mean is, in an already crowded mid-range to premium mid-range smartphone market, is there really a place for a phone like the Oppo Reno2? Continue watching to find out. Our Reno2 comes in this really, really cool luminous black, which reminds me of like a granite countertop or something. It's not just plain old glossy black, there are some very subtle blue accents around the edges which is really nice. The O dot also makes a return if you guys remember that, it's this little tiny nub thing that slightly lifts the device off the surface to protect the rear cameras from getting scratched. But as if that wasn't enough, the back on this guy is also protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 5. We still get the same notchless display up front thanks to the returning shark fin camera on top. Basically what I'm saying is the design language has not changed since the original Reno. Hybrid SIM tray and a nice power button with a green accent on the right side, volume controls on the left. At the bottom, the headphone jack, USB-C port, microphone for calls, and the downward firing loudspeaker. It's a hefty phone on its own but it's very comfortable to grip thanks to the curved sides. When you use the really nice included synthetic leather case, expect a pretty big bulge in your pocket. Overall, it's sleek, solid, and very premium feeling. It's almost like a flagship phone on the surface just as much as the original Reno was, and I can definitely get behind that. Up front, we get a nice 6.5-inch AMOLED panel with a resolution of 2400 by 1080 The experience is pretty great, being as there are almost no bezels when you watch a video in full screen and no notch to get in your way. It's sharp, pretty color accurate, you get deep blacks, and it's bright enough for the outdoors even at just 80% brightness. The front panel also gets Gorilla Glass 6 protection which is nice as both sides of the phone are covered by tough glass. For audio, the single downward firing speaker can actually get loud in a quiet room it's actually got decent separation between the mids and highs, which are reasonably clear. It's lacking a lot of oomph though. As this is a standard smartphone speaker, don't expect much depth. For a better listening experience, do take advantage of the headphone jack. Alright, so for internal hardware, we're getting the Qualcomm Snapdragon 730G chipset with an Adreno 618 GPU and 8GB of RAM. The Snapdragon 730G is the best mid-range chipset right now in my opinion, so this is definitely one of my favorite things about the Reno2. It's a great phone for all-around performance and especially gaming. We tested it out with a variety of games including Call of Duty Mobile and PUBG Mobile. Gameplay is very smooth with minimal frame drops. Checking out our benchmark scores over here, we can see over 200k on Antutu and over 2000 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme, which does indicate great gaming performance. Now for security, the in-display fingerprint scanner is pretty decent. It feels faster than the one on the original Reno, but still not as snappy as a physical fingerprint scanner. I'm still not a big fan of face unlock on pop-up camera phones because you do have to wait an extra half second for the camera to pop up before it starts scanning your face. Now for software, we get ColorOS 6.1 on top of Android 9 Pie. Now ColorOS is a pretty okay skin. It's not that hard to get used to and you won't really get lost when navigating around. Plus points for you if you're a previous Oppo or Realme user as you'll feel just at home. Now, ColorOS is supposedly going to be getting a dark mode soon which is something I look forward to personally. Though I do hope that since the Reno2 has launched this late in 2019, it gets the Android 10 update early next year. But given Oppo's history with Android updates, don't be as hopeful as I am. Checking out battery. We get a 4000 mAh cell that gets decent results. In the PC Mark Work 2.0 battery test, it got us a result of 12 hours, while in our standard video loop test, we got 18 hours and 37 minutes of straight playback. We do usually hope for 20 hours or more in these tests, but in real world usage, the phone can hold its own. The Snapdragon 730G is an efficient chipset and we can get a whole day of moderate usage before you have to charge, which by the way is fast. From 20% to 100%, the Reno 2's VOOC 3.0 flash charge only takes about an hour. Now heading to the cameras, the Reno 2 sports a quad rear camera setup consisting of a 48 megapixel main sensor, 13 megapixel telephoto lens, 8 megapixel ultra wide lens, and a 2 megapixel sensor for portrait mode. For selfies, we have a 16 megapixel shooter in the shark fin. So for the rear camera, 
viewers, it's still the same 48 megapixel Sony IMX586 main sensor as the original Reno, but now we have additional telephoto and ultra wide lenses, which I do love as it provides a lot of flexibility when you're out and about taking photos. Quality for the main rear sensor is, as expected, very sharp given the resolution. Colors are on the more saturated side, but not too much. Dynamic range is good as well. I also like that the colors and overall exposure are pretty much consistent, whether you're using the ultra wide or telephoto lenses, you can get some pretty cool shots with those. The telephoto lens in particular can actually get as far as 5 times hybrid zoom. So you don't lose that much detail, but if you need to zoom even farther, there's a 20x digital zoom which is where you start to lose a lot of detail. Portrait shots have decent subject background separation with a nice bokeh effect, even with bright backlighting. Moving on to low light, shots taken even without the night mode look pretty nice, although you do lose some color. When you do turn on the dedicated night mode though, the image is just cleaner overall with nice colors and details preserved. We've seen it time and time again. Oppo's Nightscape isn't the best night mode there is out there, but it can definitely hold its own. Checking out selfies, as long as your lighting is good, the Reno 2 can deliver nice looking shots because of its ability to reproduce nice flattering skin tones. Portrait selfies too are good, just try to use lighting that's soft and isn't too harsh for the best results. For videos, there are a couple of new features here. Now, for maximum resolution, you can get up to 4K at 30fps, but if you bump down to 1080p, you get access to ultra steady mode, which is amazingly stable as you can see here. You also get portrait mode videos, which is a cool nifty mode you can use for creative shots. So overall, the Reno 2's cameras don't disappoint. I was already impressed with the original Reno's cameras, and with this one, Oppo added just the right amount of extras to justify the upgrade. But as a whole, I'm not too sure about the Reno 2, especially since you have to shell out about 30,000 pesos to get one of these guys. I mean, it's got a good chipset, it's got an amazing design, no doubt, and a good set of cameras. But at this point, for that amount of money, why not just find yourself the nearest digital walker branch and get yourself a OnePlus 7? Or better yet, wait till they start selling the OnePlus 7T. That way, you'd be getting an actual flagship phone with an even better chipset, a 90Hz display, better cameras, faster charging, among other things. But I digress. If you are hell-bent on getting that shark fin and you don't mind the price-to-features ratio, then the Reno 2 will definitely serve you well. Alright, so before I wrap this up, don't forget Oppo also launched the Oppo Reno 2F. We also have a full review on that, check that out right here. now. What do you guys think about the Oppo Reno 2? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please do drop a like, subscribe to our channel for more content, hit the bell icon to see new future uploads, and be sure to visit yougatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. This has been Joey, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! -bye.